Hello everybody. Um, today I wanted to talk to you about uh, a couple of things. We're going to do another how-to video today. But first I wanted to uh, kind of tell you something. Um, when I when I started my YouTube channel I wanted to try and be you know a little a uh, little more uh, open uh, than other uh, people on YouTube that I've seen. I wanted to be uh, pretty transparent and <clears throat> always kind of share with you, you know, kind of some of the back, uh, you know, behind the scenes stuff. And today I'm going to do that uh, with you. Um, sorry about the cars driving by, there's nothing I can do about that, but um, uh, I received. Uh, you know, a check from YouTube. Uh, finally, got everything. I uh, got everything going on that. And thanks to you guys, um, you know, I was able to kind of monetize what I do on the channel. And I wanted to kind of share with you. I wanted to take that money <clears throat> and kind of put it back into the channel and kind of share with you uh, what I did with the money. So you kind of, you know, just kind of just sharing with you. So you guys are kind of, you know, in a way kind of part of, you know, everything, you know. Uh, so this is what I bought with the money. Let me get it here. And you guys, anybody who's watched my channel for, for a while know that I've been having, uh, you know, front end dive problems on this bike um, pretty severely. And now with the weight of the new windshield on the front forks, it's it's gotten it's gotten even worse. It's gotten to a dangerous, uh, you know, a pretty dangerous level now, especially with two people on the bike. So uh, I bought a set of uh, uh, progressive front fork springs uh, for the bike that will, uh, from what I'm told, completely cure the problem, completely uh, fix the thing, uh, fix the problem that I'm having, take away the danger, uh, improve the handling of the bike. And so, you know, without further ado, that's what I bought. And I'm dressed in my uh, hillbilly outfit today. Uh, <laughs> I wore suspenders uh, underneath my riding pants um, on my last ride, as a matter of fact. And they are so comfortable, man. Now I understand why, uh, cow uh, you know, cowboys and uh, farmers and stuff wear these things. I love them. I love them. I know, I, I know that they look ridiculous, but... Um, I really like how comfortable they are. You know, nothing's pinching my belly. I can get, you know, up and down and stuff without uh, anything going on. But anyway, that's a, another story. But anyway, we're going to be installing these today. I've uh, never done it before. Don't have the slightest idea what I'm doing. And we're going to kind of uh, discover how to install these uh, together at the same time. So uh, get back to you in a minute. Okay, guys. The, the first thing that we have to do is on my bike... Um, I guess it's not this way on a lot of bikes, but on on my bike, the fork caps are in direct line uh, with the handlebars. I can't get the springs out of the fork tubes with the handlebars in, in the way. So uh, on most bikes, this is not the case. Uh, from what I'm understanding, you can just uh, take the caps off and replace the springs. But on uh, my particular bike, uh, the handlebars are looking like they have to come out of the way. So <clears throat> I've got this really uh, fancy dancy towel that uh, Joanna supplied uh, for the purposes of not scratching anything up here when I take the bars off. And I'm just going to leave everything in place. I don't think it's going to be any problem because all I'm going to do is take the bars off and then I'm just going to kind of just set them out of the way so I can get to the to the to the. Uh, fork the fork tube caps so what we're gonna have to do first is get these little uh, chrome caps out of here see these are oh this one just came right off with my finger but anyway that's what these are if you guys have ever wondered what these are how do you get these you know to the to the bolts you just kinda I'm gonna need a screwdriver for that one but uh, so I just uh, I just take a very small uh, screwdriver and I just kind of stick it in the gap and I kind of just pull up. Hopefully you guys 
are seeing what I am seeing. I'm going to look on my screen, make sure. I'm trying to be my own cameraman here. And uh, I'm just going to kind of just stick them in there, just barely. And then kind of pull them out. Be careful not to crack them. They're made out of, uh, well, my particular ones are made out of plastic. Maybe yours aren't, but mine are made out of plastic. And then I'm going to find the right Allen socket. I can't remember. If, oh, I got the, I grabbed the wrong ones. I grabbed the American ones. I have to go back and get the metrics. Well, doggone. Stand by, guys. I have to go back and get my metric, my metric kit. I don't even know how I did that. Be right back. All right, guys. I'm back with the metrics. Back with the metric kit. Let's find out which one we need here. And there it is right there. All right. So I got my handy dandy uh, composite ratchet. I use a composite ratchet in case. Uh, you know, in case I drop it, it won't, uh, you know, hopefully it'll be less likely to scratch something. But, uh, you know, who knows. Um, also, before I started the video, I marked where the handlebars are currently adjusted to. You know, because I, I got them perfect. It took me a long time to dial them in. So I have them marked uh, side to side. And then the height of them uh, pre-marked so I can get them back in the exact spot. So, without further ado... See if we can get these loosened up and get these handlebars out of the way. These are probably going to fall down onto the tank, so I'm being careful not to let them hit too hard. There we go. And I knew that that was kind of going to happen. So now we're just going to kind of buzz them completely out. And this is where the composite ratchet comes in handy. I'm setting it down right there. Anything could happen to it. And by the way, I have the bike jacked up off the ground. There's no weight on the front wheel. It's completely off the ground. It's, uh, <clears throat> and then I have safety straps uh, strapped to the bike and to the jack, the motorcycle jack, to uh, keep the bike from falling over. No chance of it falling over. It's, it's uh, uh, solid on the jack, and also it is strapped down so it is not going anywhere so we're gonna go ahead and get these bolts out these are nice stainless steel bolts right here man these are these are high high-end bolts nice okay so I'm gonna put them into my magnetic magnetic my magnetic my, 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 my magnetic uh, parts holder and get this out of the way get my wrench out of the way onto my dealio there Take the cap off. Here's your cap, cast part, which yeah makes you feel good, I guess. Cast. Eh, I'm a little disappointed that that's a cast part, but eh, whatever. And uh, set it over there. Now we got to decide whether or not it's better to go forward with these handlebars or back. And I'm going to try back. And I'm just going to take them off, hopefully, and then just kind of. Set them down right here is the idea. Just kind of set them down right there. And now you see we've got kind of full access to the uh, to the fork tube caps. Just kind of going to take them off right here. The spring should come out right there. Everything, uh, everything should be a hunky-dory type thing. And we just got to find something that fits this cap bolt. So let me do that and I'll be right back. All right, guys. Let's see here. All right, guys. I'm back. All right. So, um, turns out that I don't have a socket uh, large enough for this cap in uh, three eighths drive. The biggest I've got is uh, 22 millimeter and three eighths, and it's a 24 millimeter uh, cap, 24 millimeter bolt. So I had to go up to half inch drive, which I'm not real happy about. I don't like using overpowered tools it takes away your feeling you know it takes away your feeling of uh, of uh, you know precisely you know tightening these things up and stuff so uh, I also do not have a wrench uh, past 22 millimeters so if I have to I'm going to have to use the 
adjustable end wrench, which I would, uh, I'd rather poke myself in the eye than use this thing. Not a big fan of adjustable end wrenches at all, especially on chrome, so we're not going to do that. So what we're going to do is, we're just going to use a half inch drive, and we are going to be really careful. Alright, that's what we're going to do. We're going to start with this one here. Now, it's important that you get the bike off of the ground and you take away the tension on the spring. See, this is where it's... It, I don't know if you guys can see that in the camera, but right here is where the bike rests when it, all the weight's on it. So, <clears throat> when you take it off, all the spring tension goes off. So when I take this cap off, we're not going to get sh you know shot in the face is the idea behind it. So I'm just going to kind of... Ooh, crap. Maybe it is a good thing I got out the, the half inch drive. Oh my god! Ooh, what the hell? What the hell, man? crazy. I wonder if this is reverse threaded or something. can't imagine that it is. Why would it be? Okay, there, finally. Fuck! Dude, that took a lot of force, man. That took, surprisingly, a lot more force than you would have thought. So I guess it is kind of a good thing I had to go to half-inch drive on that. And I'm trying not to have the socket wobble at all. I'm, I'm being very careful every time I put tension on it that the socket's flush so I don't scratch anything. But I feel this is definitely better than using an adjustable end wrench. And there was a little pressure, you guys saw that. Scared the bejesus out of me. I thought we were about to die there for a second. But here's the cap. And did we get away with it? Not a single scratch, dudes. Not a single scratch. Okay, here's the spring, 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 trying not to lose any fork oil, oh crap, we're going to lose fork oil, oh man, I better go get some, uh, better go get a shop rag, because uh, this comes out of here. Yeah, this is all soaked in oil. <laughs> so, let me go get a shop rag real quick, guys. I'll be right back. Hey, guys, got me a shop rag now. And then what I'm going to do, just kind of hold it right here, and then I'm going to place it down in here, because I don't care if this gets oily down here. I just don't want oil on my, my driveway here. So we're going to pull up. See, the oil follows along. I'm trying to let it drain. I don't want to lose any of this. Come on, how fucking long is this thing? Oh, for fuck's sake. Jeez, man. Now I'm wrapped around the brake cable. Here we go, and then we'll just set that down in there, because I don't care. But uh, hopefully this isn't like, this isn't anything like uh, battery, I mean not battery, but uh, brake fluid eats through every damn thing that it touches. Alright, now, here's the new spring, and the new spring comes with these plastic spacers, because these are made for multiple different bikes, they're not made... Uh, specifically for <clears throat> the bike in question so uh, they give you these uh, spacers and the spacer they gave me wasn't long enough to make two spacers so I had to go to Home Depot and get some PVC and cut a second spacer so there's that and then I gotta put one of these rings on the top here let me go ahead and get this out one of these washers has to go on the top right here somehow. So 
I'm just going to put the spring in first. Oh my god. It just fell, it just like dropped. Okay. Alright. Oh yeah, that's not gonna work because it'll just stick to the thing and won't let go. I can drop this in there nice and easy and all. But I think let's see what happens if I do that. Yeah. See if I can maneuver this thing into place. I can, but then it just comes right back up. Okay. <laughs> okay. Alright, got it in there. Hallelujah. And then we take a spacer. And it's just a matter of getting the cap back on, near as I figure. Ooh, boy. That's going to be fun. That is going to be fun. These were cut to, uh... These were cut to... Uh, six and a half inches. Oh, how did I know that was going to happen? Ratchet's always going the wrong way, isn't it, guys? So I'm just going to push down. God damn, it's taking a little bit of force to get that back in there. Okay, what the fuck? Gotta be careful not to strip this out. It's real fine threads. All right, let me try something else. Okay, let me reverse, and then. <clears throat> All right, guys. I just wanted to come back and let you know that uh, I was having a lot of trouble with this side. I finally got it in. And um, the threads, um, the threads on these caps are are, uh, are uh, real fine threads. And man, pushing down the pressure of the spring, and then turning this perfectly, because when you're pushing down real hard, you lose the feeling of the threads. You know, you can't feel them anymore. So then I kind of buggered up the threads. On the end where it made it even harder to uh, harder to get it started and I had to fix the threads it's a real pain in the ass but <clears throat> you know it's, it's like anything once I've done it once I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna get this side a little better but I didn't have the camera running because I forgot all about you guys um, <laughs> a lot of times uh, when uh, I get laser focused man I just uh, I forget about what I'm doing you know, I don't know if anybody else has that issue, but uh, I uh, <laughs> I just got really uh, frustrated with this thing over here and uh, trying to get it off and and uh, you know the whole nine yards that I completely forgot that I was filming a video there for a minute. So anyway, we're back at it now. Let's see how we do on the other side. This side's a little more tricky because I got the jack in the way, but. Uh, Let's see what happens this time, man. I hope it's, I hope it's better. You know, I hope the, I hope this side goes off without a hitch, because the other side sure hell didn't. And uh, so the first thing we're wanting to do, go, oh, man. Here we go. Can't, uh, can't get the cap to break loose. So let's uh, see if we can hold the forks with my leg. God, dude, those things are on there, man. And uh, I guess what we need to kind of be more careful of is, I wonder if uh, when the spring popped out, let me see if you guys are even seeing me in the picture. I, I'm wondering when the spring popped out, that that's when the threads got damaged. So I'm gonna be a little more careful this time. I'm gonna try and keep it from 
popping out by putting pressure on it. There we go. That seemed to be better. Didn't pop out at me on the last thread. It seemed to be definitely a better situation. Okay. So let's get our rag and kind of lift this out. Kind of get this pulled out nice and easy because of the oil. You got to take your time or you'll pull out tons of oil on these coils. I mean, you know what's funny is this spring does not look as wimpy as it is, you know. But I'll show you the difference in them. Maybe I should do that. I didn't do that yet. But let me show you the difference in the new springs and this spring. Um, kind of give you an idea of the difference here. All right, so let me uh, kind of show you what's going on here. We got this spring here. It's just a bunch of coils. But see how this one has got the progressive or the tighter wound coils towards the bottom? This one has no tight wound coils at all. They're really loosely wound. But that's how much shorter the new spring is from the old spring, which is, I don't know, seems weird. But uh, let me go ahead and put that down there get it out of the way and then we will try and find our washer and then we're gonna go back down in there I put the tight coils at the bottom it says in the instructions that uh, that it's a little quieter if you put the ones in the bottom but functionally it doesn't uh, matter at all you can go either way so Let me see here. Is that straight? Huh. I sure hope so. That's going to make it an awful lot harder to get the thread started. But anyway, just dropping that in there. I don't know if that's sticking up higher than the old one or not. But uh, let me get around the other side here and try and. Is it going down? I think so. Can I move your hand for a second? Oh man, hope that towel stopped that. All right. So I got it on there and I just hit right here with the ratchet. So I'm hoping that didn't dent that. I'll have I never seen anybody. How you doing? Never seen anybody push a toolbox down the fucking road like that before, but whatever. Torque specs, handlebar clamp. Torque specs, handlebar clamp. Torque specs, handlebar clamp. Okay, guys. Just got finished torquing down the handlebar clamp and looked up the specs and it was uh, 17 pounds. Man, that seems awful low, but that's what it said, so that's what I did. And, yeah, I mean, that just seemed kind of a, a low amount of torque, but I mean, they are rock solid. I know a lot of guys just tighten these up is, uh, you know as tight as they can go they just crank them down as tight as they can get them but since this was a cast part I definitely did not want to do that so I opted I had opted to use the correct torque settings and uh, just want to clean this all up and then the moment of truth is coming to see whether or not 
we dented the gas tank, hoping that we didn't. But, uh, get all these oily fingerprints off of the front of the chrome here real quick and then we will see what things look like here in a second when we when we put this thing down and see where we sit now as opposed to where we were sitting should be should be sitting in the same spot but it should be significantly stiffer and and uh, not uh, completely you know bottom out when you when you have to hit the brakes hard so that's what we're hoping for let's go ahead and get the straps off real quick off of off of the, the jack here let's see if I can squeeze by here and I can okay squeeze by all right now the first thing we're going to want to do here is get the kickstand down get that down and then we're going to try and get we're going to leave this on here for right now let me take a peek okay no damage to the tank the, the towel did protect it all right mystery solved i know you guys wanted to know that as soon as possible like me <laughs> um but yeah so good thing i'm a big guy i can do this uh by myself in most cases uh without damaging anything i'm gonna take the safety off click it in place and then i'm gonna lower the bike down there we go now we're back onto the the weight of the bike and then i'm gonna just lean it over onto the kickstand which is not going to be good enough to get the jack out the jack is is it's hitting the jack when i lean it over and i don't think it will now so we'll go ahead and lean it over that was pretty hard on the ankle holding that big fat bitch up like that all right wheel that jack out of the way and let's see with the weight on the bike what we're looking at now we put this here and uh see what we're looking at as far as okay well it's looking like it's sitting right where it used to sit i think Ooh, man okay before guys i would the the whole bike would dive when i would do that okay so here's get a towel off of here I think I'll keep that as my shop towel because uh, it's got awful ugly and I'd like to never see it in the house again to tell you the truth all right so everything's batting down now I'm gonna really honk really uh, really, uh wow okay it doesn't look like the forks move <laughs> Dude, that's crazy. The forks don't even move, it doesn't look like. All right, here we go. Dude, the forks barely move. Uh, that's interesting. They are noisier. They're definitely noisier. I can hear them. But I don't know if that's just because I need to get some lubrication going or whatever. But uh, let me see. See how that looks now. I don't know. The only thing left to do now is go test it out. All right, guys. What do you say we go test this thing out? See how it rides. Definitely want to tell you guys again. You know, the, the guys that have been here since the beginning and watched a lot of my videos and, and uh, done your part to make the channel you know better and more successful uh, you know thanks a lot for that uh, you know these front springs uh, are because of you guys and 
you guys watching my videos and I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. So you guys take care and I'll be back in a minute and test out this bike. Alright guys, just got back from uh, testing out the front forks and they are amazing. Amazing. Fixed all the problems. This bike rides like a dream now. I mean it's, uh, man, what a huge improvement. What a huge improvement. And again, thanks to all my viewers for uh, you know, watching my videos so I could uh, so I could buy those. Thanks again, and uh, we'll catch you a little bit later on. On that end.